Hello, this is Burr Stewart, and welcome to part 68 of my continuing series of model railroad operations videos. As you can see here, we're starting off with a passenger train. In this case, it's the Great Northern Empire Builder. But at this point in 1973, it was run by Amtrak, and they were still using the old F units. Although this lead F unit was already painted in BN green, which is kind of cool. We're going to run the Empire Builder around part of the layout, and then we'll do some switching with that beautiful U-boat that Brian Elchlip recently weathered and detailed, and that'll pretty much be our operation for the day. Now first we're pulling into the station in Everett with the swing dancers there in the background. And we'll do a brief station stop here before we head down to Seattle. That's one of the new Rapido heater cars because those F units have no steam generators in them. As you know if you've been watching my channel, this HO scale model railroad is based on the Burlington Northern in 1973, which was the merger of four different railroads. And so in the first few years of the merged railroad, all of the paint schemes from the different railroads were on display. Here you can see a BN green caboose with a sky blue switcher. You can see the original Great Northern paint on this baggage car in the foreground. And you can see in the rear, in the engine facilities there, there's an NP locomotive. Now well, I guess it's time to take off. Two blasts means we're leaving town. The bell means danger. Get out of the way. So this is called the hockey stick color, that white and green scheme. And you can see it on a second car there. Uh, and we'll, we'll go into some of these other cars there. The final observation car is also the hockey stick, the so-called paint scheme with the white stripe and the green body. Most of these cars are made by Walters. We run them here occasionally because the Empire Builder, which is still running today, by Amtrak was also still running in 1973. There's a really nice observation car with lighting in it, the, the blue car. And of course we have to go over the squid bridge at least once in each video and here it is. This train has been rolling for several days as it left Chicago and moved across to the western part of the United States, came across the Cascade Mountains into Everett, and now that it's stopped at its station stop in Everett, it's heading south along the coast towards Seattle. And that's the nature of most of the trains we run here. This is the town of Muckleteo, where they should have blown for that grade crossing. We have a, a station stop here, so they're coming to a stop. Doesn't that brake sound nice? That's the Everett Junction switch there, where trains can come in from the east or they can come in from the north. Parked on the other main track is a short train pulled by the U-boat that Brian Elchlip recently weathered a Riverasi locomotive, and we'll be running that in a few minutes once we run the passenger train into Seattle. It's parked on this main because we need to thread this passenger train around two freight trains that are occupying most of the main tracks. There's the U-boat. We'll be playing with that in a minute. We had to maneuver across a, a double crossover here because of the other train that was standing in the way of the passenger train. Nothing wrong with a little right hand running though, I suppose. 
That telephone on the front fascia is for calling the dispatcher if you need to, but it doesn't look like we need to. I really like that silver CB and Q observation car. Those were definitely part of the mix during these early BN years. Oh no, another British locomotive is pulling those trains. You're in luck, we won't have to listen to that horn in this particular video, but beware if you're looking at past videos or even future ones, we have a lot of British horn honking in these videos. Not today though. Today we're being strictly prototypical. This is the area between uh, Golden Gardens and Carkeek Park leading into Ballard and then the Salmon Bay Bridge and then over or under I should say the Emerson Street Bridge and into the Inner Bay Yard in Seattle. There's the Inner Bay Engine Terminal on the left and the car repair shed on the right. Whoops. We had a little problem here because we forgot to line the switches so that the passenger train would stay on the main line after it got around that strange freight train with the British locomotive on it. So we had to back the train up, change the switches, and all that kind of stuff. But we're going to spare you that agony and we'll just well, no, we're, I take it back. We're not going to spare you that agony. We're going to subject you to this agony. This is reality model railroading on this channel, and sometimes we make a mistake and we have to correct it. Sometimes we make a mistake and I'm able to edit over it, but in this case, we're going to back up and line that crossover and get through the yard without further problems, I hope. Now I'm lining that track and I think Scott is going to line the other one. But no, I guess I lined both of them. Now we should really power that crossover with switch motors, but we've been too busy with the rest of the layout. If you were listening carefully, you could hear both the locomotive sounds and the heater car steam generator sound that went by there. If you don't believe me, back up the video and listen again. Those blue colored locomotives are painted in GN Big Sky Blue, which only lasted for three years. It was started in 1967, and by the time of the BN merger, they went to green. So in 1973, there was still a lot of blue painted cars, and you'll see them around the layout in various places. Well, now we've made it to the south end of Inner Bay Yard. We're crossing Broad Street in downtown Seattle, and we're going to have another problem, as I recall. Maybe not. We make so many mistakes when we're shooting these videos that I, I lose track. But it is a pleasure to hear those crossing bells, which as you know we just installed recently. What we need now is flashing lights. That's uh, what passes as the Seattle skyline there and Mount Rainier on the right, which is visible on a nice day from downtown Seattle. This gives you a, a good and, and final view of this really nice passenger train. We've tried to set it up with the right type of cars in the right order, but if you know better, give us a comment in the, uh, in the comment section below.
Well, now we can get back to our U-boat, BN-5651. These are some relatively new car acquisitions. You'll recognize the Class 1 model work, the press center flat cars, and these really beautiful tangent insulated box cars that were used in certain kinds of perishable service like beer. And that's one of the new Atherin Genesis cabooses with the sound car in it. I've given Scott the instructions to integrate these new cars into the interbay yard based on some waybills. And so he's going to do some switching once we get in the yard. And I hope you'll enjoy it. These early General Electric locomotives have a great engine sound. This is an ESU decoder. And this is a Riverasi locomotive. It's a U28C, I believe. And when you see it close up, you'll see that it has rotating axle bearings. Also notice the caboose track there. Scott gets done switching these cars into the yard. He's going to return the caboose. And that's how you'll know the video's over. This inner bay yard that we're in is kind of the central focal point of this entire model railroad. And if you go back to part one of this series of videos, you'll hear a long explanation of how we switch out the cars on which track using the car cards and all sorts of operational details that I'm not going to get into right now. But I, I recommend that video to you. I'll put the link in the description below so you'll be able to find it easily. One honk means he stopped, at least for now. Oh no. There's the onion. We got a new one. I think he flipped the switch wrong. But I did want you to know that we do keep onions down there. You've seen it in previous videos. You'll probably see it in future ones. Now look at those rotating axle bearings. Oops. Just take a look at those bearings rotating. Isn't that a cool feature? I'm telling you, model railroading just gets better and better all the time with the new manufacturing technologies that people keep coming up with. This milepost 1.4 is from the King Street Station in downtown Seattle. Isn't that a beautiful engine? Nicely detailed and painted. A few minutes later, he's dropped off that set of cars, and he's coming back to do something else. I can't remember what it is, but we'll have to see. Oh, he's picking up this Penn Central car. It's probably in the original train. 
Bang! Greater than four business no more. Did you hear him? Greater than four business no more. That means you want a couple up only at four miles an hour or less. Bang. Scott's a former railroad and locomotive engineer, so he really knows how to run his model locomotives. He's using a proto throttle for this too. I'm not sure why the stops are so abrupt. I think I need to change some settings in either the proto throttle or the locomotive. He's down to only two cars left from that long train that he had. So he's going to leave the caboose right there and put these other two cars where they belong. Zero track is now full. Zero track is where we keep empty cars. That's over by the C track, which is our third arrival departure track. The prototype only had the A track and the B track, but we needed more because it's a model railroad, so we added a fictitious C track. Uh oh, here comes another bang. Can you feel it? Bang! That funny looking stick figure with the blue LED is a blue flagman that Seth Newman sells on his Model Railroad Control Systems website, MRCS. I recommend them to you. We don't have it turned on right now because it's not sitting in the right spot, but it just takes power from the rails wherever you put it. The Penn Central merger, of course, between the Pennsylvania and the New York Central and some other railroads took place in the late 60s. So if you're modeling 1973, you need some Penn Central rolling stock for sure. Bang! <laughs> There's your bang. <laughs> well, I don't know. That's what it is. Well, that's a nice overview of the Inner Bay Yard from the south end. Now on the north end, a switcher has run around, taken that Penn Central boxcar off of the locomotive, and put it on the correct track. Now after using his fancy micro mark on coupler, he's going to pull that caboose and put it on the caboose track there in the foreground. Nothing to it. Over on the right you see the engine terminal and as soon as we've got the caboose put away, Scott will take his beautiful locomotive and park it with those blue steeds over there in the engine facility for servicing. Nice. You want to kiss the cabooses so that you don't tick off any of the uh, conductors that are doing paperwork in there or, or the people that are restocking the supplies. And a lot of people on these, on these cabooses. That was well done.
One advantage of model railroading over real railroading is you can listen to jazz while you're doing it. I don't think the real railroads allow the engineers and conductors to listen to radios while they're working. I kind of doubt it. Well, as promised, now it's time for the locomotive to come out of his last yard track and move over by those blue diesels in the engine facility. One of these days we'll finish modeling those sand towers, but even the way they stand now, at least you get the idea that there are going to be sand towers there. The fun thing about reality model railroading is you don't have to finish everything. You can enjoy operating while you're continuing to do model building. One of the fun things about watching Scott run a locomotive is that he lets his brakeman get off and flip the switches before he changes direction. Sometimes he even moves his fingers to look like the switchman running around. See, there he goes. He's figuring out where the crew is and then whether they're riding on the locomotive or whether they're walking on the track. See, there he's crossing over and flipping that switch and then the crewman's walking back and then he's going to get back on the locomotive when it comes up. Now see, he stopped the locomotive and let the crewman go out and line from behind and jump back on the locomotive before he proceeded. That funny uh, sanding sound you've been hearing every time he breaks is an oddity of the way that I set up the ESU decoders so that I would hear when the brake was applied as the sanding sound would come on. I'm not sure I like it anymore, but at the time I did it, I thought it was very clever. Of course, the prospect of changing every locomotive to a different setup, well, we'll see how long it takes me to do something better than this. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video where we uh, ran the Empire Builder and then we played with this new engine that Brian Elchlip so beautifully detailed. Who knows what we'll be doing next time? In the meantime, I hope you'll visit all the other videos on my channel. And this is Burr Stewart, wishing you much fun with trains.